speaking of that, I guess it kind of leads us into what's to come this season, really. And I wouldn't expect you to have an answer in a season that's just been invented by FIFA. Um, let's play a World Cup in November and December, Simon. Um, let's play an entire half of a season in less time than ever before. Let's get all the Champions League games done um, before mid-November. Um, I mean... It's. I mean, first of all, it's insane, isn't it? But what does that? Absolutely what is, bonkers. Yeah, but what does that look like? You know, now, you know, what, what? How? How does that change the approach in pre-season? And I, just to speculate, from my the only way I'd look at it is, do you set the lads up as though it's a straight burn till November, and then you got, and then maybe you got, you do another pre-season in that period, or is it you? I, I, I you know, you. Okay, because some lads are just going to be playing World Cup games as well. Yeah, I don't think we we actually. I think we're quite fortunate. We don't have a lot of World Cup players, um, and so I'm guessing that this might play into Klopp's hands, undoing the stuff that we talked about earlier about him him coming here and not having a winter break because now he's got a winter break. Yeah. So he actually him and and Corny they know how to prepare for a double a, a, a two pronged season, but. They've never played. Nobody has ever played the volume of games before Christmas that that uh, we've got this time. So on top of the World Cup, we've got international breaks. Yeah. Uh, what? Yeah. Ab- absolute, absolute madness. Yeah. And um, so if we look quickly uh, while I ramble, we look at the the um, how a game week looks, right? So you have match day, match day plus one, match day plus two, match day plus three. And plus one is um, an active recovery day. Plus two is usually a totally recovered day, a passive recovery day where you just stretch. You basically do very, very little. You might have some kind of uh, walkthrough, breakdown of of game footage. Game day plus three is where you start to do actual training. Yeah. Because the on the fourth day after a game is actually when a human is recovered. So on on all of the all of the testing of of footballers over the years, the central nervous system has fully recovered on the fourth day after a game, right? We don't get that very often. So I call that full rest day. And um, between the twenty seventh of August and the eleventh of December, which is seventy seven days, there's not one single game day plus four. There's not one single fully recovered day when and football clubs train, actively train in the way that you expect football teams to train. If you showed up at a training ground and you see lads um, like competing and sprinting and maybe even 11 on 11, that only happens on game day plus four. Never happens on game day plus three. Yeah. Right. That doesn't occur once in 77 days between uh, born. So from the fourth game of the season, and the World Cup, it doesn't happen at all. So it's just game, two days, game, two days, game, two days, game, internationals. So it's madness. So what we have to do now is embed all of the tactical approaches for the season. So we always have some, there's always a nuanced um, uh, change in how we how we are going to create for the season. That's going to be done now because he, there is no moment in the season where we can start to do that until after Christmas, which is really weird because we've got a whole ton of extra days. It's like they wedged everything in before the World Cup, and then afterwards they went, ah, fuck it. Like, this, this, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's surreal how few games there are after Christmas. Yeah. Like, like this year when we when we got through all of the Cups, there was like, oh, well, we're never going to fit any, but any, there's no, no days to fit games in. There they go, oh, pick a week. Pick a week. It's yeah. easy. Yeah. It's it's so weird why they've, why they've set it up this way. It's for the your, your, um, your Champions League, I think. <laughs> Um, so anyway, what the consequence of this is there is going to be lots of proactive rotation. My feeling is that he's going to he's going to have 18 players that get fully rotated in the first half of the season. You're going to get Robbo, Trent, Virgil, Mo. They're going to be playing two thousand, two and a half thousand minutes ish. They're going to be used quite a lot, quite intensively because they're not at the World Cup. And apart from Trent, obviously, hmm. well, it's yeah, he's going to play. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, but you're going to offset that with probably uh, 800 minutes ish from their understudies that wouldn't usually play. They would only get Caribou games, and there's no Caribou. There's one Caribou game before Christmas, right? The, the last game before 
they leave for the World Cup. That's when the first Caribbean game we get to play. So sign me up. But it's all just real games. So I hate that goddamn competition. And I I have no interest in the domestic cups at all. Um, But this year we can actually use them as preseason and and topping up. So you 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 remember what I said about the understudies mm-hmm. um, not being fresh, not being not being primed to to for game time. So if we're using those for those players, I'm fine. As long as our first team don't get any bloody Caribou Cup games, sign me up for that. Like yeah. just play our reserves. We've got a significant reserve squad. Play those lads in all the cups. If they win, amazing. But then don't start drip feeding our. Um, and Virgil shouldn't be playing in the second round, any round of, of the Caribou Cup. Yeah. But when we start getting drawing its big teams in the third round before the court, court final, Klopp last season started dripping in the big players. Ali played, Virgil, Trent, Robbo. Um, I think uh, Canate played 59% of the season. Um, Jota played 58% of all minutes in the Cup. Trent played 55, Robbo played 55. So at the end of the season, they'd, they'd wasted so many, wasted. We won those cups, so that's exciting. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Let's just, just to qualify. What is, what is the cost? Yeah. yeah. How tired were they at the end of the season? Yeah. Because they did that. And, and, and we've got actual understudies for every position on the pitch now. So, so as long as we're smart, we can mitigate their load and they can be fresh if you were c- coming into the season then because obviously that's that's very much looming on the horizon it's going to be part and parcel of the preparation the te- you know the team will be back in on th- this week coming pre-season will begin jetting around the world again which is obviously a, a thing but because uh, i I think Liverpool need to hit the ground running this season they need to hit the ground running every season when you're playing against Manchester City for, for a title how much do you think how will Klopp handle that? Because you've got new I mean Nunes is there, he's a sixty-five million pound centre forward. There's obviously other considerations in terms of what he's gonna do. He it, the title winning season, we saw the, I think we saw a little bit less rotation because he just wanted to go. He just wanted to trust that the lads he could put out there. How how do you think he'll balance that? Because yeah, you can't afford to over integrate or make too many sweeping tactical changes because he'll want to just pick up where the team left off, albeit fresher. Yeah, I I also don't want people to um forget that Diaz, as exciting as he was, he so he did the things that the eye test shows. You can see him right, he runs incessantly, but the way we created change when Diaz was in the team. Like Mo got lots of crit- criticism relatively, but his role changed because of how Diaz and then Mane were in the team, mm-hmm. right? Off the ball, the way we press changed when Diaz is in the team. So he isn't the perfect cog in the system yet. He will still take time. So Darwin will absolutely take time. I don't I don't know whether my feeling is it's unlikely that Klopp will go, um, right, play exactly the same way as you would everybody else. I think they'll try to mitigate the things that he does instead until he's caught up to speed. I think we're probably underestimating Bobby's role in next season. Yeah. That would be my guess. And Bobby's brilliant. He is a lot less brilliant than he used to be. Players get old. That happens. But he allows the team to function in a really comfortable way they all know. Yeah. And and I think there is significant value in that. I think if if we can try this new evolved way, worst case, we stick Bobby in and everybody just settles back down again into the role that they absolutely autonomously know and they don't have to think about for, for half an hour a game or whatever. And and it works. And it might not solve the tactical problem going on in that game, but it, it, it very much well might, and we're probably going to be more secure with with Bobby in there, and allows the other players to do those things. So, I think he would have to be blown away by Darwin in in preseason for him to be starting the season. Klopp doesn't get he, he's he's not enamoured with shiny new toys. Yeah, 
Hope you enjoyed that little section with Cy Brundish from this week's Expert Insight. There is loads more from that show right now on Redmen Plus. We delved into the science behind why Joel Matip played his most ever minutes for Liverpool, why Jordan Henderson played his most minutes for Liverpool in four years, and also uh, a little bit on the future of Naby Keita. I would expect, I'm fully expecting a jump up from Naby from next season. So uh, I think it's probably on... Oh god, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think Naby's fine now. I think he's he's fit, flying, and used to the 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 league and the system. He has trust within the squad. He has trust from Klopp. Yes, find out what size talking about there. Why he believes it'll be a breakout season for Naby and a whole host of other amazing topics and insights into the sports data analytics and physical departments of Liverpool Football Club streaming right now on Red Men Plus in video and in podcast form. Go to redmenplus.com, sign up, and get involved. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel if you enjoyed that video. And if you want more from us or you want to support the free stuff that we do here, then please do check out redmenplus.com, our Liverpool streaming service. It's like Netflix for Reds where we get to chat to Liverpool legends, past and present. We've got great interviews there with Virgil van Dijk, with Jamie Carragher, with Phil Thompson and loads more as well. Get closer to the fabric of Liverpool, the football club and the city on Redmen Plus.